what's up everybody this is controversy and today guys i welcome you back to another episode of the underdogs today i'm going to be interviewing chicago rapper beyond b but yeah i hope you enjoy that's that's basically mm, what it is. definitely yeah because like how much album how much albums have you dropped like four i, I made three this is the fourth three. one that's crazy yeah. Yeah, I, 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 the first two I spent like way too little time on because I dropped them within a month of each other. So I was like, I probably should, you know, mm. put more time into them and make them sound better. So I think I started working on this one in, in like early February and, mm. uh, and it's going to drop in like a week. So, yeah. Damn. So you've been going at it since like for like how long? Seven months? Yeah. Six or seven months. Mm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, no, I like... And, you know, you're definitely a rapper that I respect a lot, you know, because, like, you definitely, like Ghost and Cloudy, you definitely do look like you know what you're doing. You know, like, you're Thanks, definitely man. a phenomenal artist. Like, I'm telling you, the first time I came across your music, like, you sound a lot like Quadeca. Yeah, I've had, I've had crazy. quite a bit, few people tell me that. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. Yeah, I, but... I do derive some inspiration from him, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and... Like is he, um, is he like your main inspiration? Like, I would say that I have like my biggest inspiration is Eminem, but like mm, I also definitely. have some that influence me more on like a, per, like song to song basis. But mm -hmm. Eminem is like who I want to be as like an artist as a whole. But Eminem has like only you know one particular style that everybody yeah. knows him for, like these angry, like really hard hitting. Yeah, apps. Slim but, Shady. You know, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't always want to be doing that so that's why i look for other artists mm -hmm. and for inspiration as well yeah definitely you know i'm like that too you know like eminem is a phenomenal artist you know he's definitely in my top 10 um yeah but yeah i look for other people for inspiration you know like kendrick cole yeah those are all you know mm. goats as well definitely definitely um and like how did you get into rapping Okay, this is a very long, it's not a really long story, but it takes place over a long period of time. I actually started rapping when I was like 10. I made, um, basically in like fifth grade, I was this really rebellious kid. I didn't really like school. Mm. So at the end of the year, me and my friends wrote a diss track <laughs> on school. Damn. It's probably the cringiest piece of music anybody has ever made. Maybe one day I'll upload it, but I'm not brave enough to do that right now because it's just so bad. And then I was like, I actually kind of liked writing that song. So I was like, maybe I'll do some more of that. And then the next year I wrote like six songs. And then I made mm -hmm. uh, this album that I never released because I didn't yeah. understand how to m put music on Spotify. I think it was called like Door Opener or something. I don't oh. really remember. And then I uh, stopped doing it for like a year because I just didn't have anything to write about. And then um, one night mm. in quarantine, I think, um, well, no, not in quarantine, uh, last year in April, uh, I was just really bored. So I was just like, okay, I'm just going to start writing. And that's how I got into making music seriously. So, yeah. Mm. Damn, that <laughs> distract is cool. Yeah, it sounds, yeah. It sounds, it sounds interesting, definitely. Um, yeah. And I guess... Another question could be like, how did you get like your name? I uh, I don't have a cool story like everybody else. It was just a nickname that one of my friends called me a couple of years ago, mm. and I just when I started rapping, I was like, oh, I need a name. I was my original name was gonna be like the the name Ben because my name's Ben, but like it's spelled like capital B and then the number three and then capital N. But then I was like, mm. I, I, when I was like typing that name in when I made my Spotify profile. They were like, that name is already taken. So I was like, damn, I have to think of something else. So I just was like, oh, Beyond B sounds kind of cool. So I just did that. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I know. That, no, that does sound cool. Like, I don't know. When you say it sounds like Beyond, Beyond B, like. Yeah, I, I guess it yeah. does a little bit. Yeah, I know that. No, that's a cool name. Definitely, definitely. Um, Thanks. And. I guess another question could be like, who are your top, like, do you have like a top 10 favorite list of rappers? Um, yeah, there's, there's, uh, there's like two lists I have. One is like my top 10 rappers of all time. And then like, mm. or like my favorite rappers of all time. And then like another one is 
my favorite rappers currently because um there's mm, makes sense. I, like i said before there's rappers that i um look to as the best of all time and then there's also mm-hmm. rappers that i listen to on a more consistent basis so i guess like my um top of all time would be obviously eminem mm. um and then probably tupac uh oh, definitely. tupac is awesome mm-hmm. and then definitely uh kendrick and then mm. j cole and yeah that would that would have to be my top four uh, i can't think of anything else right now um, and then uh, currently what I'm listening to a lot is Quedeca, obviously, waiting for his upcoming album. Yeah. And uh, Dax. Oh, um, yeah, he's good. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this guy. There's this uh, rapper called Billy Marchiafava. He makes a lot of these uh, short, like, banger-type songs. I like them a lot because they're, like, pretty catchy. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's that's who I'm listening to, like, at the moment, but... It, it changes pretty consistently so yeah definitely that's a great list you know yeah um quad deca yeah that's definitely a rapper that you know like and i mean i i go back and forth you know like paying attention to what's going on in the in that community you know mm-hmm. um i mean like but i'm not as like i'm not as aware of it i guess you know as like um right i'm aware of what's actually happening right now in hip-hop um, and I guess another question would be, like, what do you think of, like, the state of hip-hop right now, you know, like? I think it's, uh, it's very weird. Mm. Uh, I think because yeah. of Lil Pump blowing up in, like, a couple of years ago, mumble rap is kind of, and that kind of genre has just taken over mm-hmm. um, the community. But I think it's actually slowly, like, moving away from that. And... I while I don't see as many artists like Eminem popping up out of nowhere, yeah. I still think that there is like a huge like vacuum that needs to be filled definitely in the community, if you know what I'm saying. Because yeah. um I feel like a lot of rappers nowadays are just doing the same thing over and over. I think you made like a uh didn't Benzino make a song recently and it was just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yes. I watched your reaction to that. It was uh, it was just that was fun. It was painful to watch. No, definitely. Um, I think Sad. I think too many people are trying to hop on trends and like mm. until we see something like completely original, it's gonna be in a state where um there's like either really underrated rappers, or really overrated rappers, but there's no one that like everybody knows for being really good or everybody knows for being really bad. So I think someone needs to mm-hmm. come and fill this vacuum before it just something bad happens. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, like yeah, and I agree with what you're saying, you know, definitely. Um I feel like that's why i'm saying that the way i see it rappers like kendrick and cole they're really rare to see you know because like you don't see a lot of rappers come up that really care about the craft of hip-hop like they don't really care about you know um telling like impactful stories or talking about conscious themes in their music you know they don't care about that it's all just about you know i have chains jewelry cars you know yeah and it's like that's why i'm saying that kendrick and cole are like the pride and joy of hip hop, you know, because like they're the type of people that really put an effort into what they do. Yeah. It's not just about the wealth for them. That's why I'm saying that, you know, they're definitely. That's why they're up there, you know. They're up yeah, there. Yeah, I think. Comes to, I think uh, the the rappers that are going to be remembered like a hundred years from now are the ones that just like pioneered something that we know uh, are really well in rap, like Eminem or Tupac, Kendrick mm-hmm. Cole. And maybe maybe even a mumble rapper because they were just so popular like a couple yeah. a couple of years ago and still now but a bit less definitely um, but yeah I think that's those are the only ones that are going to be remembered because who knows what the state of music will be like even ten years from now it's impossible yeah to predict no definitely yeah um and you know you you mentioned Eminem like what do you think about uh people criticizing eminem because like he's definitely have, have, has he has gotten some backlash over the years definitely yeah i think uh, i didn't actually listen to revival i oh. just didn't want to and i because like all of the negative feedback about it and like how terribly it was received and also the fact that it's like i i don't know the exact length but i know it's like nearly an hour and a half long i was just like i'm not gonna bother with this um, I actually, so I don't have an opinion on it. The only song I like, I only know like two songs from that because I listened to them my own time. I know one of them is uh, Walk on Water with Beyonce. Mm, no, I didn't good. think that was actually too bad of a song, but 
you know, it was it was just okay. And then the other one I know is Offended. And I um that that's one of the less popular songs from the record. I only know that because it has a pretty good fast verse in it. Definitely. Um, but I think I think our, our our in addition, I think our state of hip hop has become where you're criticized a lot more, mm-hmm. especially if you're a really big artist. Um, and you know, Eminem's music is being critiqued more than ever. Definitely. So I just think he needs to. I think if revival was as bad as it was. And then uh, his next uh, album, Kamikaze, you know, I think was definitely better because I actually listened to that one. I think it was uh, pretty decent, but not mm-hmm. amazing. And then Music to be bur- Murdered by, uh, excuse me, was um, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, no, that I was a good he, project. Yeah, I think if he continues to really work on them and make it like what we know Eminem for being, like it's not bad to expand it to other areas mm-hmm. of music, but you have to at least be good at it. Um, yeah and really know what you're doing and i think if eminem continues to do what he's doing in the way that he's doing it right now specifically i think he'll be in a much better spot than if he continues to try and do what he did in revival so yeah yeah i agree well i mean you know personally for me revival like that album wasn't really that bad i mean you know like some people just criticized it for the beats and I guess because they didn't agree with Eminem's political perspective. But it's like, I don't hate that album. It's not my favorite album, obviously, but it's it's not that bad. You know, there's some pretty good songs on there. Mm, yeah, I know he talked a lot about uh, political themes on mm. there. I, I don't know what, but um, yeah, it's it's. I, I don't think it's uh, necessarily ever a good idea to mix politics with music because mm. it, it, yeah, politics can, get a lot can of divide backlash. people over anything definitely yeah yeah no definitely yeah um yeah i I don't try to get political in my music you know i know that you get you can get a lot of backlash from that and it's like right there's people that may not agree so yeah no matter what mm. you do in politics there's it's it's a it's a it's an uphill battle and a slippery slope so i generally tend to not go there Mm, definitely um and I guess my other question would be like, how did you get into album reviews? Um, so I I actually didn't know. <laughs> I, my inspiration was from the Needle Drop, obviously, because my videos are in a very similar format to him. I actually didn't mm. know who he was until like a couple of months ago when I started doing them. Because one time, um, I think the Music to Be Murdered by review that he did came up in my feed, and I was like, oh, I want to see what this guy says about it. And then like it just progressed into me watching like hours of this guy's videos yeah definitely he reviews them very well Mm. and then i was like i should start doing that for um you know rappers that i know and like so i i did and you know it's it's great for me because i get to make content i also get to listen to music and produce content for that so it's a win-win all around yeah yeah no anthony fantano's a great um reviewer yeah like i also got into doing that because of him definitely yeah um and i guess the other question would be like when did you like start your youtube channel or like when did you get into doing the youtube thing so i actually i think i made my youtube channel um i think it was like june of last year and i had only uploaded one video to it uh, mm. for like a couple of months it was just an album trailer for my first album and mm. i think it's still there um but i didn't upload it to it like consistently until like the following june of this year because i was like maybe i should start trying to build a platform on youtube because if i upload consistent consistently uh people will find it and maybe that'll attract people to my music so yeah i'm that's basically how i did it but I, I think it's as, as you want to grow as an artist, because, you know, none of us in the rap community right now are, you know, yeah. enormously known. I think mm-hmm. it's important to take advantage of all social media so you can use that to your advantage as you want to become more popular. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and, you know, I, I, yeah, and, and as for the underground community, like, is there like a specific artist in our community that you're just like, you know, this dude is like absolutely amazing. You know. Um, I would I would say Ghost Man. I really yeah, like definitely. I really like Ghost. His, 
Uh, his first album on the rise was really, really decent. And then mm -hmm. never look back. I think was even better. I think he genuinely has potential to become like really well known um, mm -hmm. and not just our community, but the mainstream one as well. Cause he has like so much talent and like everything that he does, like the, the emotional songs, the bangers and the diss tracks. It, he has a very uh, great catalog uh, wide ability. Yeah. And even though he only started making music, like I think less than a year ago was, but he's got a lot of ability. And so I respect him. And mm -hmm. if he keeps, you know, doing what he's doing, he's going to only go up and that's only a good sign considering where he's at right now. Yeah. No, Ghost is a phenomenal rapper. I'm telling you, like I came across him, um, I think it was last year. Oh, no, no, not last year. It was like this or like early this March. You know, like, and this was at a time in my channel when I was like starting to do reactions. So, and then he came up to me and then he, he requested for me to react to his Alcatraz. And I just, I was just astounded at how great it was. And I was like, Damn. yeah, that's a great track. Yeah. Really, 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 really great song. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, Ghost is one of those artists that it's like when he drops something, we're all expecting it to be good. You know? Yeah, and then ninety percent of the time it is. No, definitely. He yeah. also, um, in addition to his music, I think he also like, kind of uh, formulated our community because of that rap tournament he did. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. in definitely. March and April, I'm pretty sure that was when it was, and May. But that was a pretty big thing in our community because like we had a lot of people in it, and mm -hmm. you know, uh as you know we progressed closer and closer to the end of it like more people started coming in and that's when i met like uh, i think you and cloudy and a lot of other people that i still talk to in the community today yeah i didn't even know who cloudy was i met well you know the first person i met was ghost and then that tournament yeah. came in and then i met you and cloudy and um i think some other people yeah i know but man i remember that tournament. i remember like i think i was going up against you I was like, oh my god, I think dude. so, yeah. And then I think you beat me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, I was just astounded <laughs> yeah, by your ability. I was like, what the heck? This dude is 13 years old, but he raps like he his rapping is just different, you know? It's not it's not like I don't know. Yeah, and I mean, you know, when I lost to you, people were like, Oh my god, he lost to it to a 13 year old. Like, what's wrong with you? I mean I mean nah, bro, but like to be honest. Biambi is 13, but it's like, well, I mean, how old are you right now? Are you still 13? I, I turned 14 a couple of months ago. Oh, um, but yeah, cool. I'm still. Yeah, no, but like, yeah. you know, last summer, it was like when you were 13, like, I don't know. At first, I was like a little bit embarrassed by it, but then, you know, then like I saw the song that kind of beat me, and I was like, you know what? No, this dude is, for 13, he's really good. Really good, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I um I also think it's incredible because I think when I listened to your um what you did for the tournament when I went against you and then like I think I listened to that yesterday just you know for old time's sake and then I listened mm. to your new song with Cactus Cordell oh, I was like underdog. I was shocked by how much you've improved it's like definitely crazy it just sounds like two different people because um one of them like in my opinion wasn't very good and then like the underdog is just you you smashed it on that song yeah it, it was really good so the underdog yeah i think it's incredible that's, like um, how much people improved yeah that song yeah. um it's a diss track <laughs> and you probably know who it is who it is against yeah 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 um yeah. yeah no you know i thought that was a pretty good song actually you know uh cactus he's um a dude that has a lot of potential you know like and I was just astounded by his verse because he absolutely, you know, his bars were just amazing. I mean, he, like if it one bar he said it was like, um, and I was talking to him about this yesterday. Um, it was like when he said or when he rapped, if it takes me to bring back Pop Smoke to kill you, then so be it. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that was my favorite bar as well. I, I, I personally, I think he's had a better, better verses in the past. It wasn't particularly my favorite, um, but I, I don't think it was terrible. I just think like, you know, he's done better work in the past, but I, I, I'm i excited for his, um, what's his uh, album uh, called that he's teeth. dropping next year? Teeth. He's dropping like, yeah, on I'm May. Yeah, I'm excited for that. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I, I'll, I'm definitely going to be listening or, and reviewing that. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. Hopefully, that'll be really good because then, you know, I like reviewing people's work and giving it high scores because, you know, it's yeah. to do that. That's great. And it's like, you know, I always thought of these reviews to be helpful. Like, I'm, I mean, at least for me, you know, I remember like when you were reviewing my bars were bling EP, like I actually took all of that advice and really yeah, implemented that in my first album. Yeah, you know? it, it, it's, it's been like a, you've definitely progressed over the months and I can really like see the progression. And I think you're just going to keep getting better, which is something that is Mm -hmm. you know i i respect you for that ah thanks man definitely you know like and i mean i'm not dropping a lot of music right now and i'm just going like single from single here and there but yeah definitely yeah yeah um and i guess the other question would be like i don't know um so do you think that um i don't even know to be honest um like i don't know what do you think of like doing hip-hop like reactions like you know like no life shock or you know those youtubers Um, i think it's you know as you said before it's uh i think it's you know helpful to the artist as well because you know you said like you took the feedback i gave you I think it's also good for me because I get to listen to it and it also uh, helps me in a way because I can take some of my own advice because obviously, you know, I'm not perfect with my music. Um, So I can take some of my own advice and apply that to my music as well. But it also just allows me to produce content. And um, yeah, I I don't like do reactions per se. I just do reviews. But like essentially they're the same thing because the only difference is one is just live and the other is not um so i think it's helpful to everyone all around because it mm-hmm. helps the artist it helps me and it helps the people you know watching it because they get stuff to watch so i think it's pretty important to, for me to do that no yeah it is it's, it's really quite helpful you know and you know i mean if, if i'm like reviewing a certain song or album from an artist i try not to be like not like in a way where i'm like being you know an asshole but like in a way where i'm like actually helping the person you know constructive criticism yeah yeah that's the it it, it, for me it just doesn't make sense to do a review if you're just like berating the person the whole time um that's why like i i did that review on death row that cloudy and ghosted Mm -hmm. i kind of regret being like as harsh as a I did because I feel like it could have made my points better without you know saying all the things that I said but at the end of the day it was you know they they weren't they didn't have too much of a problem with it so I'm glad I got off the hook with that but I'm gonna definitely work on how I review things (laughs) in the future so I don't that doesn't happen again yeah no definitely um yeah I mean when it comes to doing album reviews you know I feel like Anthony Fantano like, if there's an album that he doesn't like, he just, I don't know, he just kind of, I just feel like he's sometimes too harsh with it, you know? Yeah, he's really harsh, but the thing about it is that he's harsh, but he also, Helpful. like, gives, re- like, really de- detailed reasons as to why he doesn't like it. Um, so I think that's really helpful, but, yeah, the harshness, you know, sometimes that it helps. <laughs> seems a bit excessive, yeah. um, but sometimes it can also help because it just shows how frustrated he is because he knows the artist can do better so mm-hmm. i think overall in the long run it would probably help the artist because yeah definitely yeah um and like like do you have like any other you know dreams like aside from being in a rapper i guess um i mean I would that would definitely be my dream job but you know mm. we, I guess I I also play soccer like oh yeah um um I play for a travel club right now I yeah. I think it would be pretty cool to be a, a soccer player professionally I obviously want to be a rapper more cuz that's what I put most of my passion into but being a soccer player would be also pretty cool cuz 
uh, you'd get to just, you know, play sport for a living and make like really good money off of it as mm. well because uh, soccer players get paid very, very well. So I think that would be pretty cool as well. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I honestly like throughout my life, I had different type of passions, you know, before the rapping, it was, I mean, I mean, it still is a passion right now, you know, like I'm really interested in technology, you know, and I would definitely do want to like pursue a career and learning more about it, I guess. Like you know, a like, programming kind yeah, of career? Programmer, yeah, definitely. Nice. Yeah. And yeah, um, I, um, both my brother and my dad are software engineers and mm. they said it's like quite a difficult field, but it pays like very decently Yeah, because it's such a much needed field. Definitely. Uh, especially with how our world is moving really towards technology and away from like the things we had in the 1900s. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. definitely a good path to be on. Yeah. Damn, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, I mean, it definitely is good to, you know, have other dreams, I guess. You know, I mean, yeah. like it's good. I don't know. I feel like it just expands your catalog. You know, it, it'll be cool for people to like know you for, oh yeah, he does rapping or he does this or that, you know? Right. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think it would also be like, if I ever got stuck in a situation where like I was in college, but I could safely drop out and pursue rapping as like a career where I know I could live stably um, or live as like a stable person, I would still like do my best to finish college so that just in case something would happen with the rapping, then I could always have something to fall back onto like a major or something. Mm -hmm. So then I wouldn't just be completely left in the dust. So that would probably be my plan of attack. But if, if there was like a situation where I was like reaching incredibly high levels of fame, like a, like a Billie Eilish or something, cause she's really young, but also extremely famous. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I would probably drop out, but if there is a case where like, it's like half and half, I would try and work it out just in case. Always have something to fall back on. That would be my goal. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, man. Um, you know, I've asked you a lot of questions. Like, do you have any questions for me personally? Um, I don't. Uh, how did you get into rapping? How did I get into rapping? Well, it was like actually through Tupac. You know, cause I remember like one time I, I, the first song I ever listened to from him was hit him up, you know, the diss track towards Biggie and his entire label. And, you know, I thought it was quite amazing. Like I never yeah, really, a good song. yeah, I never heard of anybody go as hard and as just, and honestly just go as, be as personal in a diss track. Cause he talked about a lot of, you know, personal things, Biggie sleeping on his couch. I thought that was okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, through him, he kind of introduced me to old school rap, which is kind of right. something I listen to a lot nowadays. Um, but, yeah, and then I just started doing it a lot, you know. I, And at first, I wasn't as good at it, but I, I'm definitely trying to perfect. I kept perfecting it, you know, as time went on. Yeah, you definitely are improving, so. Yeah, Take definitely. All right, man, but, you know, um... I, f I guess you know this is the interview, man. You know, um, I'm glad to have you. And yeah, it was great to be here. No, definitely, yeah, I know. Um, and I hope we can do this in the future. You know, it was great talking to you. Yeah. And yeah, yeah man. Peace. Thanks for having me. Oh, definitely. All right, guys. That was the interview with Beyond Me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Also, stay tuned for his new album that's dropping, I think, in less than a week. And yeah, this is Controversy from the Underdogs, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. <laughs>